in a world of 3D printers, prototypes, and over-engineered gadgets, one tiny trebuchet stands tall, ready to hurl miniature stones and reclaim the lost art of mechanical mayhem. Biff, pow, zap, clunk, clunk, ouchie. Hey guys, so what do you think? Yes, I've been tinkering again, and this free to download creation is the Vogman Trebuchet. And before you ask, yes, of course it works. It's modular, it's mechanical, and it launches projectiles with medieval precision. Uh, bang, look at this completely authentic damage. Let's walk through its battlefield credentials. In terms of appearance, it's a pretty classic design. It's strong, sturdy, and assembled with 100% real imitation metal brackets and bolts, savagely clamping ancient PLA timbers into place. It should look perfectly at home on any ancient battlefield. The arm is trestled neatly into place, but hangs loose and free like a bard's promise on a Saturday night. A large bucket dangles below, brimming with the kind of potential energy my science teachers somehow failed to nail into my brain. In this case, it's weighted, just as the ancients didn't, with loose pocket change. The arm pivots, allowing the business end to rise energetically to the top. And this scoop, of course, is what holds any projectiles. The arm can be lowered with a working winch. A hook and line wrap onto a roller, hand cranked by a couple of hefty lads. Or perhaps a gullible low-wage ogre. This spins a gear and a pull latches into place, preventing the arm from ejecting its load, as premature ejaculation was frowned upon in the days of yore. Taking more than a little artistic liberty, I designed a trigger mechanism that captures the arm as it descends. And this is released by pulling upon a sturdy hemp rope. Or in my case, a golden glittery thread stolen from my wife's Christmas craft box. And finally, of course, master stonemasons were employed to chisel out magnificent and mighty balls of mayhem. Impressive, eh? Designed to be 28mm scale, by those standards it would be huge, as trebuchets often were. And personally, I'm pretty pleased with it. The project was designed with FDM printing in mind, but don't worry resin guys, you're not left out. You'll need a medium range printer and strong resin that doesn't break easily, such as Soriatech Blue. You might find it easier to lay large parts flat upon the build plate. This could result in a few unsightly tide marks, but a little sanding should polish these away easily enough. I'm not going to do a blow-by-blow -blow design overview for you guys, unless that's something you actually want. In which case, get in touch, and if it's a popular request, I'm more than happy to do that. Building a functional trebuchet at this scale took a bit of trial and error, but overall, it's a very basic concept. Really, it's just a collection of straight timbers, combining ladder and A-frame constructions into a solid little seize engine. The arm, again, is simple and pivots at the top of the frame. There's a typical ratio of three or four times the length at the business end compared to the bucket end. It's critical the bucket hangs freely and it needs to be big enough to store weight, giving the throwing arm energy. Just make sure it doesn't hit the floor when it drops or all that energy will be wasted and your miniature carpenters will be demanding overtime and hazard pay. To trap the arm by trigger, I added a simple notch and hook. This did take a little adjusting to get just right, and I found pitching the hook more steeply improved its ability to grab and hold. Of course, to stay upright, the trigger needs to be counterbalanced, and unfortunately, PLA doesn't weigh much. So I needed to make the counterweight much too large for true scale comparison, but its location means it doesn't spoil the whole aesthetic. The gear was straightforward enough, but the pull ran into the same weight problems. In the real world, weight and gravity would allow the pull to drop into the gear. Being PLA, it's very light and practically floats in the air, especially if the gear is turned quickly. 
I tried to combat this by adding a finger handle and this helps. As a whole, the process works, but it's more for show than true functionality. One final consideration, FDM doesn't lend itself well to precision printing. For this reason, I've tried to incorporate small size differences wherever this occurs. If you have a problem, a little sanding may help. Alternatively, try printing the part at 99 or 98% scale. All parts should download already aligned to the way I printed them. There's a PDF instruction manual included, and you'll see I recommended 50% fill for some parts, with no brims needed, although tree supports can be useful here and there. Other parts are best printed at 100% infill with brims, especially where strength matters. Printing tall, thin structures like these pins can sometimes cause parts to fall over and misprint. I've been using the Eligu Centauri Carbon and genuinely, I've had no such issues. But if you do find your parts falling over, try reducing the print speed. Remember, slow and steady builds the C's engine. You might notice that the slicer says Eligu PLA, but that's not actually true. I used Sunlu Grey PLA Plus for this whole project. It printed very well for me, strong, clean, with no major issues so far. As mentioned, there's a full PDF instruction manual provided, but I'll walk you through the process here too, with no medieval blacksmithing skills required. To begin, FDM prints are notoriously snotty on the edges, so a light rub down with sandpaper helps everything to fit better. These are cross beams, and you'll notice one is a little thicker than the others. That one goes in the middle. Each end has a diamond shaped hole. Glue a frame pin into each. These then get glued into frame one. Next, assemble the arm, the arm pin, and both washers, all without glue. This is the roller and roller pins. These definitely need gluing. Push the roller into the frame, but no glue here. Push the pull pin through and hang the trigger arm from it. Make sure of the orientation. No glue is needed here either. Now for the fiddly bit. Glue the end of the cross beams and glue both frame sockets where the arm pin will sit. The arm will hold itself briefly whilst you fit the second frame into place. The handle gets glued on. Make sure it can turn freely. On the opposite side, glue the gear and pole into place. Just be careful not to glue them to the frame. They need to move freely. The bucket goes between the two frames, sandwiched between two washers. Don't glue it yet, not until you add the bucket pin cap. That secures the bucket, but it still shouldn't be glued to the frame. And that's it, and it really does work. It should be a fantastic addition to any wargaming table, diorama or shelf display. Personally, I just use mine to shoot the wife, which as far as I can tell isn't technically illegal, though the consequences can be deadly. I'm genuinely very happy with how it's turned out, but you know me guys, I had to tinker just a little bit further. So I created a premier version available for just a few quid over on Colts 3D. This has a little more aesthetic charm, perfect for posh wargaming. And keeping it practical, I also extended the base and added wheels, just like many real trebuchets had. But for me, it looks even cooler when the wheel pins are removed, the wheels are placed nearby and the trebuchet is ready for action. The Premier version also includes a longer throwing arm for increased range, plus interchangeable heads, so you can fine tune your launch angle, or even remix the part if you're feeling ambitious. There's also a ribbon tower included for dramatic effect, a stack of ammo, and even spiked projectiles. But please, no shooting spiked objects at anyone, even that annoying guy next door. I know it's tempting, but we only encourage safe violence on this channel. If you'd like to launch your own siege campaign, the Vogman Trebuchet is free to download at the libraries linked below. And if you want to upgrade your arsenal, 
The Premiere version is only available on Colts 3D. And there we go. This was a bit of a different project for me, but I really enjoyed it and quite fancy doing more like it. So I'd love to hear feedback from you guys, maybe with project suggestions, positive vibes and large bundles of cash. But I'll settle for likes, subs and shares if they're on offer. And haters out there, well, you can kiss my axe. So that's it for this one, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Take care, and thanks for watching.